which is our quality of life task force. We believe it is extremely important for us to bring together all of the different agencies, whether we're talking police, fire, um, public works, the inspections um, division, bring them all together at once and you go out across the city and you make sure that both homeowners as well as commercial property owners adhere to our property maintenance code. We believe this is about quality of life and it enhances the appearance of your city and once you do that, once you stay on top of it, people will begin to respond differently because we all want what's best. We all want to live in decent neighborhoods. And it shouldn't matter which part of the city you're from. It is important that as we move our cities forward, that we pull everyone along with us and that all across our respective cities, that there's that decent quality of life and that there's a focus on making sure that residents, property owners, commercial buildings adhere to our property maintenance codes. And so we have made that focus. It has been very successful, and we have seen the results, and this is one of the entries that we submitted for the Livability Award, and it's been a lengthier um, video, but it certainly demonstrates the efforts that we are putting in to making sure that we transform our city one block at a time across the entire city. Now I will transition into another project, which is known as the South the Second Street Youth Center Pathway to Stabilization. And this is a project that we only um, today won an award, a grant award from Wells Fargo through the partnership with the U.S. Conference of Mayors. This was a blighted site and it invited activities that we don't want to see in our city. And this was just one of many spaces we must revitalize. And so it was extremely important that we begin the process of revitalizing a portion of our city that has been left behind. Everyone worked in, in a very constructive, productive way, and so this was seen as problem-solving an issue. And so we had strong collaboration in order to deliver this project on time. So this site was also part of a comprehensive redevelopment plan that included redeveloping another uh, five-acre site further down the street, and we're going to be adding 90 units of affordable housing as well. The Second Street was already delivering a high-quality education program, but we were in a very substandard facility where there wasn't even daylight. And now here they are in a state-of-the-art facility where they have windows, and we've seen an impact on children's behavior as well as their capacity to learn. It creates a level of comfort for parents, knowing that you can actually go out to work and your children are in a safe environment where their educational needs are being met. They're receiving uh, healthy foods and a high quality education as well. And then of course, the children benefit by being in an environment that's very interactive and stimulating. And so the decision was made that this is the right time to bring our students into a facility that is modern and it provides all of the smart growth features, the hydroponics garden, which will take care of food insecurity of our young people. There is a water retention system. It's talking about the playground that is being established with recyclable materials. The lighting features that are energy efficient it is a part of the vision for the city. And so this is about uplifting and bringing along every part of the city as we climb. One playing field, one future, united as one to make this community all that it can be. The Second Street Youth Center will have a lasting effect on families because we have now created a legacy in this part of the community that is going to last from generations to generations. And so this program was launched in 2018. This facility was constructed on a one vacant blighted site. It's 1.25 <laughs> acres and it, you know, has been constructed in a part of our city. We have four wards in our city. And this ward is the most challenging of our four wards. And my vision is to make sure that we transform our entire landscape, every wall, and that no one is left behind. 
So the school grew out of an old building owned by the city. The students outgrew this space and needed a more modern facility in order to enhance the educational experience. So we adopted a redevelopment plan that created a zoning to make it possible for this project to be constructed. But it couldn't have been done without the cooperation and the collaboration of the city by way of a pilot payment in lieu of taxes. And so we work closely with uh, our developer to help put together the funding that was necessary in order to make this project a reality. So the city has partnered with the Second Street Youth Center, Five Ways to Civilization <coughs> Program in order to expand the educational experiences, the promise and the opportunities that we have made to our young people. So this will uh, pretty much be a project that will better prepare our kids, K through eighth grade, at a very early age in order for them to excel and to succeed in the world. It shouldn't matter where we live, what zip code into which we were born, our social experiences. What matters is that we are all human beings wanting the absolute best for ourselves, for our families, and for the communities where we call home. The funding for the pathway to stabilization will certainly help the Second Street Youth Center and the City of Plainfield to fulfill a promise offered by this redevelopment project. We will make sure We will make sure that young people are exposed to STEAM, science, technology, engineering, and math programs, because we know that when we prepare our young people well, they will do better in school. So the Second Street Youth Center program will provide a customized curriculum for children, as I mentioned, in K through the eighth grade, incorporating next generation science standards. The program will provide hands-on activities that tie science to everyday life as well as literacy and arts. Currently, the Second Street Youth Center has only six computers that must be shared between 90 after-school students and 150 summer STEAM camp students. And we know that's not, that's not good enough. So this grant will go a long way in helping us to provide from books and other resources that will enhance the educational experience of our young people. There are also plans to add a robotics component to the educational experience. Along with in-class competitions, students will have the opportunity to participate in VEX competition against other schools. The STEAM program also incorporates Second Street Youth Center's urban farm. We think this is extremely important, providing opportunities for our kids to learn the importance of eating healthy. And so we will be growing produce right there on site. Produce from the farm will be included in the snacks and some will be sent home with these families because oftentimes kids, they go to school hungry, they go to bed hungry. And so food insecurity is something that we are very conscious about. And so we can <coughs> eliminate to the extent that we can food insecurity. So the school also functions as a satellite location for some of our recreation students, and we will continue to work to make sure that the experience that we provide to our young people is enhanced in a decent environment that will cater to their needs and make them become all that they can be. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Matt. That's some. Uh, Pretty exciting work that uh, you're doing there. Uh, we're now pleased to have Kim Norton, the mayor of Rochester, Minnesota, with us. Uh, mayor Norton and her city have created a destination medical center. Mayor Norton. Norton. 